Kind of like a spring day here. Hopefully the worst of winter is over in a Special salute this week. Uh, happy birthdays to Kim Engel, uh, Sean Woods, Emily Elfman, Casey Anderson, uh, and Julie, uh, Julia Lawrence. Happy anniversary to Stephen Valerie Fisher. Prime time lunch uh, is tomorrow at 1 p.m. at sunrise. She has well, you got the sheet. The monthly life groups will be next Sunday at 6 30 at the Wildman's house and then also another group here at the church. So please uh, partake in that. It's a lot of good conversation and a lot of learning about the Bible. So if you haven't been at one of those, you're really missing out on a nice uh, time. The sign up sheet on the back table for our spring outreach. There's two sign up sheets. One is for people that uh, would like to help. Uh, there's going to be games and food and uh, all kind of things for the little ones to do. And there's another sign-up sheet for people that are coming. So if you've invited somebody, you know, please tell your friends, family, anybody about this. It's, it's a good outreach program. Uh, there's uh, a flyer on the back table. Uh, it says you're invited to a spring outreach event, April 6th at 10 a.m. It will be breakfast, pancakes, eggs, fruit, and drinks. Mini games, an egg hunt, and a visit from the Easter Bunny, where you can take your picture of Christmas. Please uh, get that out there so we can have a nice turnout for that. Midweek Bible this week at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, it's a study of discipleship and acts. And we have a lot of people on our prayer list, just to name just a few. Don Davis, who's recovering from cataract surgery. Dominic Rossi was having some heart issues, but he's scheduled for surgery to take care of that. Uh, Patricia Cooper, uh, Elwood Stone, there's many on there, so please take a minute to look at that. <coughs> that is uh, all I have. Really, just a, a reminder to the annual Last Leaders Convention going to Nashville this year uh, will come out in about six weeks. It's April 19th. Please keep all that's involved in that in our prayers for the trip. Uh, is there anything that I've forgotten? Okay, please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time thanking you so much for all you've given us. We ask you, Lord, to please keep all those safe that are unable to be here this morning. We ask also, Lord, that you watch over those who are protecting our country. Please keep them safe and help the families through the hard times. Help all those, Lord, on a prayer list. Please help comfort them and help them get well. Please guide the doctors so they can also help them get well. Thank you for all you've given us, Lord. And most of all, we thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
seek a relationship with us and for the opportunity to, to be closer to us. He has brought us his son who lived on this word, world as we live, felt all of our temptations, felt all of our weaknesses, did not sin. He brought his son here to show us how to live and to show us how that we can be with him. Let us give thanks. Let us pray. Lord, our great and heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the love you have for us, for the gift of your Son that came on this earth to live as we live, to have common grounds that we can understand and we can see. We thank you, Lord, for doing all this for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
and that all we do today is for the benefit of others and to help amplify your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I worship you.
so she can get through to a store she just has to get to. And I thought, well, I'm going to try something here. So I went over there, I went like this to her, I stood right in the middle of that group and I, I yelled out, STOP! <laughs> and everybody froze, I said, come on, we got to run into the store. They froze just long enough because they didn't know me from that. <laughs> Who's this guy? But it, it worked. They got her over to the store. Uh, okay. Cut that a little short. These men were determined as well. That young lady was determined to get to that store. And these four young men were determined to get their friend to see Jesus as well. Perhaps their paralytic friend was worse off than we realize. He might have been near death. So the man ripped the building apart, tore open the roof, and lowered their friend through the roof. You get, we got a picture of this. Jesus, seeing their faith, forgave the paralytic and then heals him. Reading this account, I've often wondered how the homeowners felt about this. You know, they no doubt made a lot of preparations who Jesus is coming to. And I know there's going to be a lot of people here. So I'm going to clean my house up and try to get things ready. Now they're all just packed in here. And they're barricading the door with their backs are so packed. And then all of a sudden all this stuff starts coming down off the roof. And uh, I kind of picture it as almost a dirt roof because it, it says in there they dug through the roof with whatever they have up there. The stuff's falling down and everybody's got to be going, what's going on? You know, and here's the homeowners seeing their house hole torn in and you know this picture of root parts are falling down and a mass of people gathered there to hear Jesus they were looking up wondering what was happening they see something being lowered what's coming down now something being lowered in their midst only be surprised to discover a human in that whatever they had in it whatever that power was you know it was a paralytic whether these friends of the paralytic lowered themselves down or just gazed from the roof, I'm not sure. But Jesus, seeing their faith, forgave and healed their friends. Their faith was in Jesus. They knew he is a healer and they loved their friend that much. They loved their friend so much enough, enough to carry him to the house, which hadn't been a labor. I don't know how far they went, but they had to carry him there. And, uh, to the house where Jesus was speaking and they even took the chance of repercussions for destroying another person's home uh, they said that whatever it takes just to get their paralytic friend to Jesus we could tell that they were desperate to get him there they would not have done anything like this if they first didn't have the faith in Jesus and recognize who Jesus was some have suggested that Jesus was refer referring only to the faith of the paralytic. But we read in this verse, and Jesus seeing their faith, not his faith, his faith, and Jesus seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, my son, your, your sins are forgiven. What a sight. What a sight that had to be. The people gathered had to be amazed. Well, most of them probably were, but not the scribes. The so-called religious folk of the time, they took exception to what Jesus had just done. No one but God can grant forgiveness, they reasoned in their minds. And of course, controversy breaks out among those religious scribes. So you know, when you think about it, some things never change. Ripping the roof syndrome, is only necessary when and if we are so caught up in our own little religious world that we turn our backs to the needs of those still outside the building. We become barriers instead of gateways. It's when we care more for keeping things intact than restoring lives that are shattered. It's when we care more about the stuff that gets broken and getting excited when the broken get healed. 
It's when church gets reduced to just preaching so that we fail to notice that we are seeing very little of the forgiveness and healing of Jesus. We're limiting ourselves. It's when we're so fearful about upsetting the religious folk, the homeowners, in our midst that we stop taking risks to get people to Jesus. It's when my problem, my privilege, my title, my influence, my comfort takes precedence, precedence over others' needs. It's when the church exists for itself. I'm not saying that this is us, just that we have to be careful that we don't fall into this too, all too often condition. We need to look at this narrative and reflect on it more than we have. The narrative of the paralytic and how it relates to us. What roof tiles do we need to break? What are we willing to suffer the loss of for the sake of reaching those right outside our door? Let me put it another way. We left the Opera House in Cortland several years ago now. Do you think anyone in the Cortland community missed us? Did any of them miss us? Did the people of Cortland even know that we moved? Did they even care? If not, why not? I know this isn't easy, and I'm sorry for making anyone uncomfortable with this talk this morning, but I think we all need to hear this. We have to be careful that we're not just protecting the status quo. Terry, a few years ago, taught a series on change, and I can remember presenting a sermon on change myself. It was at the Opera House, and I arrived early, and I moved all the furniture. When we faced the one wall, I moved all the chairs to face, face the, the uh, stage. I wish I would have had a video of that. <coughs> all of us scurrying around looking for a seat. I mean, it's just natural that we would do that. So when we first opened here, I was going to hand out all the sticky notes, put your hand on and put it on your chair. You see. Uh, that little change made all of us at least a little uneasy for a time. Something as simple as change in seating had an effect on us. It takes a lot of courage to stand in front of people and talk about change because we all know it's an uneasy thing for us. The word change causes us to stir. I've been up to something lately. Some of the people I've, some of I've been talking to, I've incorporated the word change just to, just to kind of sense a reaction. It seems to cause an uneasiness in most of us. And that's natural. I mean, it's just natural. All of us are a little fearful of the unknown, the untested, that which is out of our routine, that which is different. Deb and I just come back from Florida. We spent two weeks with a friend and his wife. And I, I was totally out of my comfort zone. I mean, it was great accommodations they had for us. But we didn't have my recliner. I did not have control of the TV remote. You know, just little things like that. Just like those scribes, when they seen something different, Jesus forgiving the sins of a paralytic, this was something that had not been done before. It was out of the ordinary. It was not tradition. All of us are creatures of habit. Just look around. All of us sat in the same chairs. How would we feel if one Sunday you walked in here and the chairs were set up different than we did at the Opera House? Even in the parking lot. I park in the same place as the parking lot. I mean, you know, it's just creatures of habit. What if the Lord's table was moved to a different stop, spot? What if we changed the order of worship? We are protecting our roof tiles because we are comfortable. We're protecting our roof tiles because we're comfortable. We have to be careful that we don't end up huddled together, a barricade of backs, enjoying our little setup of missing out on the prime purpose of the church. <coughs> Excuse me which is bringing those outside these doors into the loving, forgiving, 
grace of our Lord. Sure, change isn't easy. It's not always comfortable. But most of the time, it is necessary. And change doesn't have to happen in a flash. It can take place slowly at first. And that's, because I know if you institute change on people, a drastic change just throws us all out of whack. So a lot of times it's good to start slow and work our way to a goal. As we become comfortable with slow steps of change, we'll gain confidence and learn to trust the Lord more than ourselves. A lot of times we don't change because we like it that way, or, or we're trusting in ourselves. And we, we don't put ourselves in a position where we have to trust in the Lord. We used to sing an old hymn where the refrain changed with each verse. And don't worry, I'm not going to try to sing it. It would start out with more of self and less of thee. And then would end none of self and all of thee. We That is a good song for us to really take to heart. And I believe our faith will grow by taking these verses to heart and acting on them. Our dependence on the Lord will be enhanced. Isn't that a blessing? Miss now. Remember Paul when he said, when I am weak and I am strong? What he was saying is, when I stop relying on myself, I rely on God. I'm confident that He's going to leave me where I need to be, and I accept that. And I believe our faith will grow. You know, when we take these verses to heart, our dependence on the Lord will be enhanced. When we make our minds up, that will not become a barricade of bats, but roof tile breakers. We need to not be a barricade of backs, but roof tile breakers. Of gateways instead of locked gates. We'll see in action the loving forgiveness of our Lord being accepted by many around us. There is not one person here who came to Jesus on their own. Someone introduced each one of us to God's love and care. That's how it still works. Not one person outside these walls will discover the grace of God on their own. It's going to take change on our part. We need to start looking in a real way for avenues to reach the lost. We may try some things that don't work. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Uh, Wednesday evening, Jeannie made a quote. See if I remember this. We're, we're not called to be successful. We're called to be faithful. I really appreciate that, Jeannie. It was a good word. If one thing doesn't work, Try it out. You never give up. We can start by asking a couple questions about our community. First question. What are their needs and how might we do good unto them? Second question is, what are they already doing that we can celebrate and thank them for? The first question, what are their needs? Sometimes those needs are, needs are hitting, hidden in plain sight. Example, single moms and single dads. Here we go, you know, we go to somebody, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. Here's what I want you to try. Someone comes up and says, how you doing? I say, well, let me tell you how I'm doing. I really had a really bad day. And, and you watch how someone starts squirming away. But, you know, just try it. So single moms and single dads. Most single parents are struggling to make ends meet. Always pressed for time. Trying to be both mom and dad at the same time. Working, washing clothes, cooking, cleaning house, paying the bills, fixing leaky faucets, changing oil in the car. Trying to be involved in school activities. Never have enough time, never get enough sleep, and never have enough money. A lot of them would love to be, attend church see your kids in Sunday school, but they're just too worn out. 
When one is in this situation, those times that normally are times of excitement, like Christmas and the start of a new school year, are instead filled with panic and guilt. Worried about where the money will come from for shoes, for backpacks, for even jeans, Christmas gifts, food from the table, not just for special occasions, but each day. Uh, we had a meeting here at the ladies yesterday, which I appreciate all ladies attended. Uh, one of the comments that come up was about how, like, the mission, the war mission, uh, I even talked to them about this. They said, on the holidays, they're packed with people who don't help. But it's when the holidays, it's non holidays, like now, is where they need help. You know, we just don't help on the holidays, we need to help always. So how can the church show we, show we care? We need to take some of these single, single parent, family, parent families under our wing and show them the care and love of Christ. It could be in the form of a new backpack loaded with school supplies, a voucher for a clothing shop, but it has to be where, you know, sometimes we like, we'll give money to support different things, which is good or we'll send some stuff somewhere, and that's good. But what's not good about it is there's no personal contact with that. There needs to be personal contact. So when I say a new backpack full of school supplies or a voucher for clothing, we need to be personally involved that person. What if those of us who know something about cars volunteer to change oil and fix the brakes for free? I'm sure if a few of those mechanically, mechanically gifted could even go to a different, could go to a parts store and explain what they're up to, and the parts store will probably give you a discount. Just think, maybe you've been wondering what it is you could do for the Lord's kingdom. There is no one who can honestly say, I would like to do something for the Lord's church, but I just don't have any talents for that kind of stuff. Every one of us has a unique talent that can be used. Maybe changing oil or fixing a leaky faucet is your calling. Never forget, we are called to serve. about a banquet for our, our local teachers and their spouses, or, or just ask how we might be able to help in their daily work. I seem to have missed the page, but that's okay. Uh, here we go. How about the police and the fire departments? Talk about a thankless job. If it weren't for the police, we'd have to be armed guards. We'd have to have armed guards at our doors, not just here, but our home and in our cars and everywhere else. Um, you know, you have heard the saying, the thin blue line. A lot of uh, police have a thin blue line across their badge. And when that, what that signifies is they are the thin blue line. They are the difference between peace and utter chaos. They hold that line. It seems like they're only recognized when one of them fails or dies in the line of duty. When was the last time we said, thank you? Perhaps the church could give a thank you banquet to the officers of firemen and their spouses as well. Just to say thank you. As we search for ways of reaching people with the Lord's message, it must be ways of personal connection. You can't take that out of the equation. Just giving money for a needy cause or sending a pack of pencils to the school is not enough. Although this type of thing is good, it's not a means of reaching the lost. This has to be personal. We must find ways to connect with people and meet them where they're at. Meet them where they are in their lives. To help them through their hurts and their concerns. To let them know that Jesus came to give them peace and forgiveness. So in concluding, we are Christ's voice, we are his hands, we're his feet, we're his eyes, and we're his heart. 
If these people see Jesus, it will be through you and I. We're doing more than rendering a service. We are loving them as ourselves. That we're taught to. Having Jesus' attitude of being in very nature servants. We need to be shingle breakers and not a barricade of backs. We must be about the Lord's work. If all we do is maintain the status quo, quote, we will become like the frog in the frying pan. One knows that's close. Let us never forget the words of the, our Lord when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those words give us confidence to step out in faith and reach out to our community. You know, you think about when we read the New Testament with the first century Christians. What did they go through? They were chased out of Jerusalem. They had to leave. Or they would have been either killed in prison. They lost their homes. They lost their family. They lost everything. When they had to shoot out of Jerusalem and find a place, they didn't find a place to hide. The scriptures tell us they started spreading the gospel. We're not faced with anything like that. But we should find confidence that even if something like that would happen, the Lord is on our side. So to any of those who gathered with us this morning that have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, consider what the Lord has done for you. He went to the cross to forgive you of your sins. He offers you a new start in life. The slate will be wiped clean. The waters of baptism, you become a child of God, a new creature. And all the blessings He offers are yours. If you'd like to have a personal Bible study, there are many of us here that will sit down with you and have that study with you. With no pressure, go over anything you want to go over in the Bible. All you have to do is ask. So if you made your mind up that you want to become a child of God, we ask you at this time to step forward as Brian leads us in the song.
Yeah.